name's Jessica. Jessica Cohn. I had, I guess, a pretty happy childhood, I think. My dad, he had custody of us. My parents got divorced when I was one, and he kind of kept us away from my mom. He always told us it was because she used to hit us, but she finally, they went back and forth in court and was finally able to get visitation with us. So that was um, a little after I turned six. It was just a very toxic environment where we lived at. It was South Texas and it was just a lot of violence and like kind of felt like growing up too fast. So I just saw a lot of things that a normal child shouldn't. Uh, I thought going out to parties was normal when I was nine, but I just never saw anything wrong with it. We, we were always um, physically punished. Uh, the belt or like a hanger, like the wire hanger. So it was just, um, I don't know, very intense. I felt scared, I mean upset, but I knew my dad loved us, but I guess that's just the way he was raised, was by hitting, so it just felt normal. But I know it wasn't. Uh, I would run away a lot. Um, just leave and then come back. Um, it was just a crazy time. Uh, at the age of 11, my mom got custody of us and we moved to Georgia. We've bumped heads forever. So it was really hard. Um, living with her. Eventually got to a point where she told me that uh, I'm the abortion she wished she had. So that was probably the most hurtful thing that she could probably say to me. It made me know exactly what I didn't want to be. After high school, I got into Georgia State and I met my baby's father. He got me into drugs. He got me into psychedelics and uh, I'd smoke marijuana every day, all day. Cocaine, just literally almost everything except for heroin. When I took the drugs, I just didn't care. I felt like I was having fun. I first got pregnant when um, we were at our first apartment. We um, were just partying all the time. Uh, we were on another eviction because I quit my job. He quit his. A couple weeks after, I found out I was pregnant with Andrew. And uh, I really couldn't bond with him. So uh, I just really went into a huge depression. So I asked my mom to take care of him for a month while I got myself together. That didn't happen because uh, we were just doing drugs instead. And so I never got my act together and finally it got to a point where we didn't have power. Um, we were on eviction and my mom was saying that she wasn't going to help me out anymore. So his mom took over of Andrew. She filed court papers for custody of him. I tried to kill myself. So I felt that uh, everything would be better if I just went away. I didn't get out of my depression because I got pregnant again. Um, I considered abortion because Andrew was only six months old 
and I was pregnant again. Uh, I didn't really know what I was going to do. I didn't even have Andrew, so I was kind of freaking out. Um, but since everybody else was kind of telling me and pushing me to get an abortion, it made me really think that um, it's my body. It's happening for a reason. Um, at the time, we were doing all those drugs, so I immediately stopped everything. I started getting healthier. I told my dad I was pregnant, so he was the only one that really encouraged my pregnancy. My mom yelled at me. She asked me why I was doing this to the family. He came early. He was three and a half weeks early. And mainly because I think uh, my father, he passed away a week before he was born. So I think that's what um, made him come early. But uh, everything turned out fine. He was born naturally and healthy five pounds, seven ounces, and he looks exactly like me and my dad, so he was just my perfect little baby. <laughs> I named him after my dad. Uh, his middle name is my dad's name, Jesse. I was living with my mom after I had Lucas. Um, I was doing good, I started working. We just butted heads, she didn't like me living with her. Um, and it got to a point where I was feeding Lucas and she was hitting me while I had Lucas in my arms. So that made me move out. So I was just, you know, jumping from friends to friends' houses uh, with Lucas and uh, someone just called defects on me saying that I didn't have a stable home. That's how I ended up technically being homeless, is jumping from place to place, not really knowing where you're gonna go the next day. The father of my kids is not involved at all. I was 23 when I got in contact with Saft. It was about seven months ago. Defax had been involved in my life for about a year because I was homeless uh, and I had Lucas. And so when Defax was called, uh, I had to have Lucas go somewhere or Defax would take him. The only way I could visit Lucas was to visit him at Saft. Um, it was initially court ordered. I thought it was kind of inconvenient, but after a few months of being there and getting parent aid and, you know, parenting classes, constant help, I completely changed my mind. I could see how Saft was wanting to help me instead of keeping my child. I have been six months sober and I can see what's actually going on in life right now. I think if Saf never got involved, I would be doing the same thing that I had been doing, which was nothing. What I like most about Saf, their constant encouragement to do better. And they praise a lot, which is extremely positive for a person who's always had negativity in my life. Zaft means the world to me. I owe them my life. I've gotten encouragement from them more than I have ever for my family. I feel comfortable with them. Uh, I could be open with them. Honestly, uh, I thank God for putting them in my life. But I think God guided me towards them. They're just caring. It's 
like family that I never had. Courtney Ayers, she is, she was my parenting teacher. She called me, she's like, well, I have this friend who wants to donate her car and she was asking me if I knew anyone and I was wondering if you wanted it. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, what do I have to do? She's like, well, you have to have a valid license. And I'm like, I have a valid license. So I go in and she has the title in her hand and she's just ready to sign the car over to me. And I'm like, this is seriously happening right now. And uh, she's like, yeah, let me show you the car. You go outside and it's this beautiful mini SUV. And I was like, oh my God, this is so exciting. So I <laughs> I literally cried. Uh, I, I was in shock. I was in a hardcore shock because I couldn't believe that this was actually happening. Uh, it's all paid off for. Like I don't have car payments. It's an amazing feeling. It's just one step better than I was doing before. I didn't have my car. I would just gotten it repoed because I wasn't paying it. Uh, so yeah, it's just really crazy how, how you get involved in a certain community that's outside of the community you've been involved in and how much your life just completely changes for the positive. Thank you so much for everything that you've done for me. I know it's been a crazy long road, but you stuck by my side and I'm very happy you did or else I would not be here doing better.